In this training module, I'm going to show you how to draft the background section of your own provisional patent application. This includes reviewing what I focus on when I draft a background section of a patent application, as well as reviewing a sample background for the tool storage system we've looked at previously. By the end of this training module, you should be able to finish drafting the background section of your own patent specification. Let's get started. On the screen, I've pulled up the template provisional patent application that I've provided to you, and we're looking at the background section of that specification. This section is optional, and often I would recommend to exclude this section, especially if you have not done a patent search for your invention, you don't have any real information about other types of technology out there, and you haven't really thought about what the problem is that you're solving, you haven't drafted anything about your problems and solutions. I would probably just go ahead and omit this at this point instead of trying to fill it out. However, I'm going to still show you an example for one of my own applications that will show you how I would fill out this section in case you want to include it. As a note of caution, when you're doing the background section, I would make sure that I don't refer to anything out there as prior art. Sometimes I'll talk about what's conventional technology, but even that's probably better to avoid than not to, unless you're extremely careful as to how you make that reference. The reason for this is because, as I mentioned in a different training module, anytime you talk about something as prior art, the patent office then has the right to go back and say that it is prior art, even if you were mistaken when you called it that. And if they can consider it prior art, they can use it to reject your patent application again, even if that's not what should have happened had you not said that it was prior art. That's referred to as applicants admitted prior art or AAPA sometimes. You don't want that to happen if you can avoid it, so it's better to leave it out than to try to be thorough and include a description of everything that you're aware of. That's not required. Separately, there is a requirement to make sure that the patent office knows about everything you're aware of, but you don't have to put it into writing in your patent specification. Rather, you would submit that later at the time you file a non-provisional patent application, and you would put it in what's called an information disclosure statement, which is really just a list by number of the different references that you're aware of. You don't have to describe them. You don't have to put your words to it. You just give them a list. It's basically giving them a stack of references that they can then determine what is or is not relevant to the examination of your application. Now, if you do decide that you want to include this section in your application, maybe you've done a lot of searching, maybe you're really familiar with the technology, maybe you know what the problems are, you're very articulate in the way that you can describe what those issues are that will maybe draw sympathy from a patent examiner who might have had the same problems or might understand those problems really well with the way you're describing it. If that's the case and you want to include this section in your patent application, that's fine as long as you are focusing on the problems and the disadvantages and the gaps in prior technology. I don't want you to go out and talk about a specific reference. I will rarely do that because there's no benefit to talking about specific references, characterizing them in a certain way. You don't want to be accused later on of characterizing something as prior art that wasn't actually prior art. You also don't want to be characterized later on as potentially misguiding the examiner by giving them a general explanation as to what a prior art reference focuses on and having somebody say that you actually lied to the patent office in order to get your patent examined. Of course, that's not the case. People don't try to do that. It's not intentional, but that doesn't stop some people from making lots of accusations when it comes to litigation. Uh, you might be surprised as to what lengths people will go to to try to win a litigation, even to the point of trying to attack your character as an inventor of a technical invention that should have probably nothing to do with the emotional aspects of a dispute. You don't want to get caught in those traps, so don't reference anything that you don't have to. Focus on, again, the problems that exist in the technology, namely what types of problems exist that don't have solutions to them yet or didn't before your invention, what some of the disadvantages are, perhaps, generally speaking, of solutions out there. You don't have to reference, again, specific solutions, but what are the disadvantages of the solutions generally that are out there, and maybe what are some of the gaps that you've identified. It can actually be helpful, and this is the reason that I include background sections in some of my applications. If the discovery of the gap in technology is new, if you're the first person to discover that gap, that discovery can be part of your invention story. There's not always a discovery of the gap itself. Sometimes people have been working on a problem that's existed in an industry for decades, and it wasn't until somebody came up with a solution that there was a solution, but the problem was always known. 
If you, on the other hand, are the person who discovered the problem in the first place, and then you're the one to fix that problem, that could actually be extremely helpful in the examination stage when you talk with the patent examiner and let them know that not only did you come up with the technical solution to the problem, but you are in fact the person who discovered that there was even a problem to be solved. It's a really good explanation to say that nobody ever solved this problem before because, in fact, nobody knew about the problem until you discovered it. So that's one reason to potentially include this. But again, focusing on the problems, the disadvantages, and the gaps in technology prior to your invention rather than focusing on specific technologies, specific patents, and the details of those in the background section. So let's look now at a sample background section for the tool storage system that we've seen previously. So here on the screen is a simple, short background section. This is typical of what I would include in a provisional patent application. It's possible in a non-provisional that I might go into more detail. It really depends on a couple things. One of those factors is whether or not this is a really crowded area of technology and we have to work on distinguishing from known problems and distinguishing from known solutions that are out there. Then we might include a little bit of background in this section. Here you can see that there are three different colors. Again, I've used blue just to represent the text that I pulled directly out of the template provisional patent application that I provided to you. I didn't change that at all. I did fill in the language a little bit with the black. Additionally, the green language here is directly from my innovation disclosure form. Since I was writing this and I've done this a few times, I ended up looking back at that innovation disclosure form and I realized that I could pull some of that language, didn't have to recreate it. I'd already talked about what the problems were. If you look back at your innovation disclosure form, there's a section specifically for this. If you fill that out, you might be able to take that same section and just copy and paste it here. Again, make sure to read through it one more time and make sure it doesn't talk about specific patents out there or specific technologies or commercial products out there. Make sure it focuses on the gaps in technology, on the problems that exist, on the shortcomings of existing solutions. And then you might find that you can just simply copy and paste that over into this template patent application. And that's it. This is a simple example of what I would do in a background section for most provisional patent applications. I would expect that this would take you somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 15 minutes, depending on what you've already drafted, and also depending on how complex your problems are that you're trying to explain, or how complex your solutions or technological gaps are that you're trying to explain in this section. In fact, it might take you just long enough to delete this section if this is a section that you're not going to include in your patent application. That would be just fine too if you think that that's the most appropriate solution. This shouldn't be an area where you get caught up on trying to decide intricate details. This is simply whether or not you have some material here that would be useful in a way that won't cause you problems in the future. Then go ahead and include it. Otherwise, just delete this section and we can move on. You should now be able to finalize the background section for your own provisional patent application. So go ahead and do that now before moving on to the next module.